All right, guys, welcome to Algebra 2. This is 3.2.3, and we're going to be talking about um, ways that we can rewrite and then reduce rationals after we've multiplied and divided them. So to start off, we're going to take a look at um, a problem like this. This is one that we did last last time, or a, one similar to the type we did last time. So what I want you to do is go ahead and pause, try and solve this by factoring the top and the bottom, and then canceling things out and then saying, hey, here's what values x cannot be. So go ahead and pause that and try that this one out. All right, so um, let me change my document camera. All right, so this one we had uh, 3x squared plus 11x minus 4 over uh, 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. So and you can factor in whatever process you pre prefer. I do this little x, and then I say, well, 3 times negative 4 is a negative 12. And I have 11 on bottom, so it multiplies to be negative 12, adds to be 11. It's going to be 12 and negative 1. I'll draw out my box. I get 3x squared here, negative 4 here, 12x, negative 1x. And then I can pull out a 3x and a negative 1, and here I can pull out an x and a 4. So the top one would factor into uh, x plus 4 and 3x minus 1. The bottom is going to factor. This would be 2 times 12 is 24 and 11, so what multiplies to be 24 adds to be 11 is going to be 8 and 3. So if I draw out my box, I get uh, 2x squared, 12, 8x, 3x. I can pull out a 2x, I can pull out a 3, I can pull out an x, and I can pull out a 4. So the bottom factors into x plus 4 times 2x plus 3. So once I'm there, I can then say, well, I have that, that giant one. I have x plus, x plus 4 over x plus 4. That's going to cancel out, and that's going to be my solution. I need to add those domain re restrictions. Here, x cannot be negative 4 from this value. And x cannot be a negative 3 halves from that value. So there's going to be my answer with the domain restrictions on it. Awesome. So that's kind of what we started doing yesterday or last time. So it shouldn't be all that um, new for us. Let's hop back over here. And if you take a look at uh, 86, right? So this is us trying just to kind of rethink back to really, really early stuff we learned as far as multiplying and dividing. So I want to show, mostly just show you a, a trick here on how we can reduce stuff in this form. So we have 2 thirds times 9 fourteenths. So oftentimes we can say, well, I can't reduce this or this, so let's multiply top times top, bottom times bottom, and get 18 uh, over 30, 42, right? And then I can just say, well, how can I reduce that? But we can actually do re our reduction a lot, a lot earlier, because I can do it diagonally here, right? Because I'm being multiplied. So 2 and 14 is going to reduce to 1 and 7, and well, 3 and 9 is going to reduce to 1 and 3. So really what I get here is just 3 over 7, which is already reduced for me. So it's not like some massive crazy trick that does all these weird things. It just kind of does your simplification early. You don't have, have, have to all up, all at once later on when it's really, really big numbers. All right, so if I do try that same thing for uh, 3 fifths um, divided by 12 20 fifths, Remember when we divide, we multiply it by the reciprocal. So we can really treat it like 3 fifths times 25 twelfths. Now that we're being multiplied, we can reduce diagonally there. So I'd get 1 and 5, 1 and 4, and then we get 5 fourths as our solution there. Great, so not a huge deal. Uh, so what we want to take a look at now is on 87. Okay, so this is going to take kind of what we just did on that earlier problem, saying, hey, look for those giant ones and reduce. And then the stuff we just did, did here with multiplication and division, kind of co combine them together. So what, what I want you to do is go ahead and pause, work through all these on, on 87, try and reduce as much as you can. But 
then also say, hey, here's the values of that x cannot be, or if there's different variables, whatever that variable is. So we're gonna try that out. Okay, so I'm not gonna do all of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do uh, E and F, because those are typically the ones that people have the most issues with. So on E, let me pull up my document camera. Um, this is 15x to the third over 3y divided by 10x squared y over 4y squared. So the first thing I want to do is change it to multiplication. So I'm going to have 15x to the third over 3y times 4y squared over 10x squared y. So I'll just, if I can say, well, nothing here is going to cancel, so I, I, I don't know what I can do. Well, let's do it part by part here. Well, 15 and 3, that's going to turn into 5 and 1. Well, 4 and 10, 2 and 5. Well, then 5 and 5, those are going to cancel out. So I've already canceled out a whole lot of stuff with, with my numbers. I'm just down to 2 over 1. That's pretty easy. All right, so what else? Um, I got uh, x to the third, and then I got x to the second here. Well, I can cancel out two of these x's. I'm just left with one x here on top. Y to the second, well, I can cancel out that with one of these y's, and then that's gone. And then I have y here and y here, well, no, those are going to cancel out. So really, I'm just left with two x. And that's all it re reduces to. Now, I do still need my domain restrictions. So uh, I see here that I had x's on, on the bottom, so I have to say, well, x cannot be 0. But I also had y's on the bottom of, of my fraction, so I also need to say that y cannot be 0 either. So those are going to be my restrictions. There we go. All right, and then the last one here we have is uh, 5x minus 2 times 3x plus 1 over 2x minus 3 squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and write it as multiplication, so I'm going to flip it as I write it down just to save my, myself that extra step. So times uh, x minus 4 on top and 2x minus 3 being multiplied by it. And then on the bottom is going to be 5x minus 2 times x minus 4. So I just kind of did that flipping step as I wrote it down because it's, again, it's just annoying just to write this, the same thing twice just flipped over. Right? So now what can I reduce? Well, x minus 4, x minus 4. 2x minus, minus 3, 2x minus 3, so, one, so this will cancel out with one of these two, so there's only one left. Then I have 5x minus 2, 5x minus 2. So all I get left with is just 3x plus 1 over 2x plus 3. But I have to add my domain restrictions here, so I got to look for any for any place where I had things being divided um, by zero. So this would be this would be this would uh, cause uh, three halves to get to give me a zero. So x cannot be three halves. The one here, and the five x minus two. If uh, x was two fifths, that would cause a problem. So x cannot be two fifths. Well, here four would be a problem. So I can't have four. And then if I look back to the original, right, over here on the bottom is, this would be four, and then this would be three halves. I have both of those already carry, already covered, so I, I don't need to worry about it, but you do need to make, make sure you look at what's on the bottom of the very original, as well as what is on the bottom of it after you've um, done that, that, that flip. That's a big place where a lot of people miss out on, hey, here's, domain restrictions I didn't see or think a, a about, and you need to make sure you have those. All right, so there is my restrictions and my reduction. Awesome. All right, let's hop back over here, and the last thing we're going to be looking at is problem 80. So this is going to be kind of a culmination of everything we've just done. So go ahead, try out A, B, C, D, E, and F. So A and B should be pretty darn straightforward for us, right? Uh, C, D, E, and F, 
you want to factor everything. Now there's a lot of factoring, and that's really the part that, that, that takes time here. So, so factor everything, there's going to be greatest common factoring. There's going to be factoring with a number in front, so, so, you, so you'd want to use that x in the box method like, like I was doing, but there's also going to be factoring which you can use the shortcut method. Uh, just try and factor it as much as you can. It's really not that bad um, once you just get convince yourself to actually try and start and start doing it. So factor it and then reduce everything and then finally tell me what values of x can you not use in that. So uh, I'm going to pause so we can get more paper and then I'll come back and we'll do those together. All right, so uh, hopefully we're doing okay on these. Um, I'm going to do D and F to say that you, you can see how these kind of things work. Um, but again, same process for the other ones, it's just a little bit more practice for you. So on D, we have 12x minus 18 over x squared minus 2x minus 15. And then we're multiplying that by x squared minus x minus 12 over 3x squared minus 9x minus 12. All right, so a lot of factoring here. So first one, I, I, I can do the greatest common factor here. I, I can pull out a six, so I would get um, six times x minus, no, sorry, two x minus three. On the bottom here, I can factor that with the shortcut method. Let's kind of say, well, what multiplies to be negative 15 adds to be a negative two, well that's gonna be a negative five and a positive three. So x minus five and x plus three times top, once again, I can do that shortcut method. So what multiplies to be negative 12 adds to be a negative one, well that's gonna be a negative four and a positive three. Then on the bottom, I see that I have a number in front, so I'd probably want to go for that box method, but I also notice I can do a greatest common factor. It's always beneficial to look for it and say, can I do a greatest common factor first? But that makes stuff way, way easier. And I can here, right? I can pull out a three and get three times x squared minus three x minus four. Now I can do that with the, with the shortcut method. And all I have to do is just put a three in front of it. So if you can ever do that greatest common, common factor, always, always, always do it. It makes it so much easier for you. Okay, so uh, we'll multiply to be negative four, adds to be a negative three, and that's gonna be a negative four and a positive one. So x minus four and x plus one. So now I'm all factored, right? The hard part's over, all I gotta do, do now is cancel things out. So I got x minus five, nothing that that, that, that goes with. Two uh, x minus three, nothing that that goes with. Uh, x plus three, I can reduce that one if this one. I can do x minus four and x minus four. I can do the six and the three will become a one and a two. And then nothing else here is gonna reduce for me. So all I'm left with is two times two x minus three over x minus five times x plus one. Great, but now, hey, what's my domain restrictions here? What values can x not be? Well, x cannot be a five, cannot be a negative three, cannot be a four, and cannot be a negative one. So I have all those restrictions on it based off of what I'm seeing on the bottom of, of any of my fractions. So. And there we go. There's my answer. All right now on F, we're gonna have two uh, x squared plus x minus ten over x squared plus two x minus eight divided by four x squared plus 20x plus 25 over x plus 4. So again, got a lot of factoring. Once you get going on, it's not going to be too bad. So 
Um, first part here, I want to factor, and I'll draw out my x. This is going to be 2 times negative 10 is going to be negative 20. And then bottom is going to be a 1. So we'll multiply this to be negative 20 and adds to be a positive 1 is going to be 5 and negative 4. So if I draw out the box, uh, 2x squared and negative 10, this would be 5x and negative 4x. So then I can factor out a 2x here, factor out an x here, I can factor out a negative 2, and here I can factor out a 5. So that's going to factor into uh, 2x plus 5 times x minus 2. On the bottom, I can do that one, the shortcut method, and say, well, what's going to multiply to be a negative 8? add to be a positive 2. So that's going to be um, uh, 4 negative 2. And then I'll just go ahead and make this multiplication now. So I'll have x plus 4 on top. And then on the bottom I'm going, to, I'm going to want to factor this one with the box method because um, it looks like I might be able to have a greatest common, common factor but there isn't one for 4 and 25. So let's go, ahead and go straight to the box method here. So 4 times 25 is going to be 100. And then 20, what multiplies to be 100, adds to be 20. 10 and 10, that one's relatively easy. And then we'll get 4x squared, 25. And I got to put those 10s in, 10x, 10x. I can pull out a 2x and a 5. I can pull out a 2x and a 5. So that one is going to factor into 2x plus 5, 2x plus 5. And that's really the kind of factoring that we saw, right? We saw greater than just common factoring. We saw the box method. We saw the short the shortcut method. That's all we saw for, for all of those. And once we're here, all we've got to do is cancel. x minus 2, x minus 2 x plus 4, x plus 4, uh, 2x plus 5, 2x plus 5. So there's nothing left on top, so it's really just like a 1 over 2x plus 5. What that reduces to. And then my domain restrictions, what x cannot be, is being, well, that's a negative 4, a positive 2. Uh, this would be a negative 5 halves. And this would also be negative 5 halves. I then also need to go up, up here and look at well, what's on the bottom of this fraction. Well, so that's just going to be um, a negative 4, which I already have covered. So I don't need to add anything new here. So there we go. All right. So with that, again, our process here is factor everything. Take the reciprocal and multiply if it's division, otherwise just, just multiply it. And then try and cancel things out. Look at what you have left. And then also check for those domain restrictions on both the original if it's division and after it's been flipped in if it's division. So, all right, awesome. With that, here is our homework for 323. We're doing 90 through 96. I'll talk to you guys next time.